Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. The clip you're watching right now shows off a build that is not new, but is using a weapon everyone has slept on since Gambit, and the amount of damage I've done, like shown, which is almost 7 million, might make this a worthy dungeon farming build. The Queensbreaker hasn't got a new buff, but the new Arc Combounding mod allows Arc weapons to do 15% more damage to blind targets. Now, while many are using Grand Overture for this, I found that the Queen Breaker is to be better in terms of quick damage and procking this effect straight away. So today, I'd like to show you this pretty brilliant dungeon build that is perfect for quick boss encounters, including Vespa of Host. Let's start with the general aim and the Zotic of the build. Our aim is to showcase an easily used end game dungeon build that is great against bosses and also allows you to make full use of Queen Breaker. For this, we will be using Geomag Stabilizers and the Queen Breaker. Let's start with our exotic armor, Geomag Stabilizers. With this exotic effect, close enough. It states, the damaging targets with Chaos Reach extends its duration. Collecting Iron Traces grants you energy for Chaos Reach. If you are ever going to be using Chaos Reach in game, then you want to use it with Geomags as these will extend the duration of your super by 10% per super hit. So to make full use of the damage, I will be using Carcassus Reload mod to apply a debuff towards the boss. Then I'll use my super until it's up and then swap to my heavy to apply further damage. This is pretty much the best way to maintain a high damage phase when using your super. This is pretty much the best way to maintain a high damage phase when using your super, as it isn't hard to miss while using it, and we can also get our super back quite quickly via on our traces, which the build will heavily invest in. Our second exotic is the Queen Breaker, with its exotic effect, Wild Rifle, which states, a fires a long range precision art bolt that changes the nearby targets and blinds them on hit. The weapon naturally can apply blind onto targets by general hits, which works out really well when using the art compounding mod. Now, from testing, my damage is varying from a low 25k to a high 80k plus, depending on the bosses and where exactly I'm hitting from them. Against the ogre and meatball boss in Warlord's Ruin, I was getting a good 80k plus with them via headshots only, and this was quite easy to maintain since they have a huge area to hit. Of course, a free round linear fusion rifle with precision instrument will come out with a higher damage output if we can match that damage. However, since our weapon can put blind quite easily, this does give us the room to constantly apply the debuff whenever we like. Now add in trace evidence and retinal burn, and this weapon actually feels more like a special weapon than a heavy weapon, with general less restrictions applied to it. For aspects and fragments, we have the following. Arc Soul, where using your Rift will generate an Arc Soul that fires out targets. Electric Static Mind, where defeating a target with Arc abilities or jolted targets creates Iron Traces. Collecting Traces makes you amplified. A Sparkle Shock, where your Arc Grenade jolt targets. Sparkle Magnitude, where Lingering Grenade durations are increased. A Spark of Ions, where defeating a jolted target creates Iron Traces. And Spark of Recharge, where upon reaching critical health, you gain increased ability cooldown. The focus of the build should be getting our super up as quickly as possible, maintain the ability energy flow from start to finish, and actively keep our jolting effects active as long as possible. Now, since the build focuses around boss damage and maximizing Queen Breaker and Geomag combo, you really don't have a lot to worry about in terms of expanding the current options. A Chaos Reach is already pretty good, and with Geomag on hand, you can extend its effects for longer, which is amazing against dungeon bosses. Now, combine this with Queen Breaker and Arc Combounder mod, and you'll pretty much get 70% of the build down and over with. Our Arc Fragments are also in a relatively safe spot, as you don't need to enhance your weapon's strength anymore. Instead, we will use the Fragments to reduce the cooldown rate and make our grenades, melee and class ability, even more active as possible. If by chance you want to, say, lean more into the Arc Blinding effect, then you could swap out Recharge for a Spark of Beacon instead for the active blind effect. Now, combine that with Indebted Kindness and some Ammo Reserves mod, and you'll maintain a very powerful ad clearing and boss damage weapon for both secondary and heavy use. That's one change I would do next, and you'll probably see me do it in the near future, but that's one way I would go about it. For the mods and stats, we have Resilience and Discipline marked with the highest priorities for the build. Recovery is also important at tier 7 but naturally can be left at tier 5 if you wish. Resilience, we have ours at a tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. We have no damage reduction mods or fragments to add this time, as I don't believe we need it, and I prefer more ammo mods instead. 
This will of course be different for everyone, but I decided this time not to run with following. A discipline we have asked at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via pulse grenades. I'm personally a big fan of pulse grenades with a radius and damage over time, but when paired with spark or shock, magnitude and ions, you can make one of the strongest grenades available in game. Now this well maintained discipline stat means that we can conjure up quite a bit of damage and ion traces as we play along. Something like this is useful as any ion traces gotten will garner us a 2% super regen via geomag azotic effect, which may be small, but is still worth the investment. Now cooldown is high, but is maintainable, so the rest of the stats you should either use the following. Impact induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff. Momentum transfer times 1 for a 12% midi buff. Bolstering destination times 1 for a 12% class ability buff and distribution times 1 for a 3% all ability buff. Now the additional mods we don't have the following. Harmonic Siphon for creating orbs of power via matching elemental weapons. Ashes to assets for gaining super energy via grenade kills. Heavy ammo finder, reserves and scavenger mods for a heavy weapon. A charged up for a plus 1 in armor charge. Arc weapon search for a 10% arc weapon buff. Elemental charge where collecting elemental pickers will grant you armor charge and powerful attraction for automatically collecting orbs of power when you use your class ability. Should be everything you'll need. Now, as we have covered our Zotic Heavy Weapon, I would then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build. What I recommend are all optional, so please keep this in mind. Our secondary is the Lost Signal with Auto Load and Holster and Vorbal Weapon. I've updated the following to have Auto Load and Holster instead of Lead from Gold as I felt the weapon is good with the current ammo it has. Now combining this with Concussive Reload has proven to be the best option for on and off weapon to use to quickly deal with tough enemies with an Arvinicity. I found this to be quite powerful when combined with Queen Breaker as sometimes we won't always have the option to land our hits perfectly while under fire. Using this with our super allows us to make peace with not worrying about missing opportunities as one quick hit is enough from this weapon alone. A primary, we have the Tarnished Metal with 4th time to charm and Volt Shot. A great weapon to use for this season's mod and interaction with the Arc subclass, I would expect the majority of players to also have a similar role like shown. It has great coverage against all enemies, can proc Jolt which interacts with Retinal Burn and Trace Evidence and works wonders against all 3 champion types. Unfortunately, the only way to get in now is through Zer. So if you want something similar, then the Corrosion Pulse Rifle is a good alternative that everyone can get and can also get Vault Shot, which is generally all you need. So it has been a very long time since we have used Queen Breaker in anything outside of Gambit, and while the provided build does expand its usage even more now with thanks to the given mod, I do not see this lasting very long unfortunately. Why? Because its reliance on the Arc Compounder mod is generally the only reason why many players will even attempt to use it. Now of course Bungie can do the right thing and apply this one mod effect to the weapon as a brand new weapon trait or catalyst etc, which if they did, more players would generally give it a try. However, with how tied up Bungie is at the moment, this is only a dream. A dream that sadly may never come true. But this doesn't mean we can't use the weapon and build as a whole still. As provided, the moment our mod is activated, it's allowing our exotic to apply a much bigger impact towards target's weak points. Using this against stun champions, it has shown to be strong enough to free phase a mini boss while still having ammo left over, something that's worth the usage when you add the ammo finder mods and such to it. And while this is semi good against mini bosses, it's also quite good against bosses as well, as the build with high reliance on Chaos Reach plus GR Mag allows us to expand our damage in a quick 1 2 phase. Having a grenade launcher with a custom reload on hand, and then using our super, and then use our heavy. It's such an easy to use combo that you too can get a ridiculously high damage down to a T. In fact, if you are a new player and you can get this combo as soon as possible, this will carry you pretty far fast. The build to me is fun, simple and exciting to use, as we are using an exotic that many people tend to not use as often. With the introduction of new weapons and prismatic at hand, many players will opt into the more powerful stuff rather than stick with what you're generally familiar with. This here shows that anything is possible with the right kit, and even with a heavy not being that OP, it can still do a lot within the given time frame it has. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, 
Well, if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. A dim link for the bills located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.